Sepsis affects about 300,000 Americans every year. Gram-negative bacteria normally stay in the digestive system, but if these germs invade the blood, they can quickly destroy healthy tissues and organs. Last year, septic shock killed more than 70,000 people. Research scientists have been working with monoclonal antibodies to develop a treatment for gram-negative bacteria. These so-called magic bullets are aimed directly at the source of the disease. They're designed to destroy the bacteria as well as the endotoxic substances themselves. Two companies are about to introduce new antisepsis drugs. One is a Philadelphia-based firm, Centacor. The other is Zoma Corporation in Berkeley. Zoma was founded by Dr. Patrick Scannon. This is a, uh, a product that, that uh, is new in the field of uh, pharmaceuticals and as such uh, we've not only developed its uh, and proven its usefulness in the laboratory but at the same time had to develop uh, new manufacturing technology to scale up and produce it on, on, uh, in the quantities necessary to reach a very large market. Uh, and finally, um, to test it on a clinical scale that meets uh, the uh, satisfactory approval of, uh, of the FDA as well. Zoma has already had some impressive results with its new drug. A woman named Mary Henderson was being treated for cancer in Southern California. She contracted a septicemic infection and fell into a deep coma. She started to develop kidney failure as a result. Uh, on a uh, compassionate basis, uh, E5 was requested and we shipped it down uh, and she had the E5 infused and with a matter of hours uh, she woke up from the coma uh, and uh, within a matter of days was uh, able to go home. So the results can be in fact quite dramatic. These drugs could dramatically increase the survival rate of hospitalized patients. They could also have a big effect on the financial health of the medical industry. During 10 years of R&D, Zoma has spent $100 million of venture capital money. They have not yet brought a product to market. Investors are hoping that their patients will be well rewarded. The anticipated annual market for septic shock products is $300 million. In this high stakes arena, both product and marketing become critical. Clinical trials have actually indicated that there may be a difference in the way the two products work. Uh, the Zoma product also has completed phase three clinical trials. They're in the process of completing an even larger additional trial now. But their product appears from the data we've seen to work earlier. In other words, patients that have sepsis before they've progressed to full-blown shock seem to have a better response rate, while the Centacor product seems to have a far better response rate in the later patients or the patients that have shock. Uh, so that raises a whole series of medical questions. It also raises a number of interesting business questions in terms of how the two companies market the products. Is there a different market size if you focus early versus late? And what does that mean for the potential revenues and the profits for the companies? It's estimated that sepsis is responsible for five to ten billion dollars annually in health care costs. Will these new drugs reduce the cost of medical care? The estimates are that to get one injection of, the, of this new material might be uh, fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars. So. Uh, whatever it costs to take care of somebody with a severe infection in the past, add to a large percentage of those people another $3,000, and you've, you've got a tremendous increase in, in base costs. Why is this business so expensive? There is a, uh, a, a new investment that has to be made in the development of these products that is um, uh, you know, quite extensive. I think people and their physicians are going to have to start discussing more and more the way in which we'd prefer to die, under what conditions would we prefer to die, but at least we have the opportunity now to, uh, to stop this particular way of dying from progressing. The fact is, this new biotechnology product will cost a lot of money. That's partly due to the great expense of research and in order to return a good profit to investors. The challenge will be to strike a balance between good medicine and good business. Terry Phillips, Silicon Valley Report.